Well, hey, good day to you. This is Todd. I am a regular dude walking in the Word. We have just finished up uh, the book of Second Thessalonians, and I wanted it to, to today is um, yesterday was Good Friday. I wanted to spend today talking about the crucifixion of Jesus, uh, and then tomorrow we're going to be looking at um, the resurrection of Jesus. Uh, some years I've done like a whole week of. Um, study on that um today we're just or this time we're just going to be doing two uh episodes uh one on the crucifixion one on the resurrection uh and then on monday we start the book of joshua the um uh what i'm going to be reading from is the book of mark mark is a gospel one of the four gospels and he focuses really on action the action that happened with jesus doesn't spend a whole lot of time on the teaching of Jesus as much as the other Gospels do, and definitely not loaded with genealogies and, and uh, things like that. But um, he focuses, it, it's a shorter book, uh, and he focuses more on the action points of uh, Jesus. So let's read here today. This is going to be taken from Mark 15, and I'm going to be reading verses 21 to 47. Okay? It says this, a certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country, and they forced him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. Then they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, and but he did not take it. And they crucified him, dividing up his clothes, uh, the cast lots, to see what each would get. All right. Remember, his, his uh, garment was a seamless garment, so... Uh, it's better to have that given to one man than to have it cut up. Uh, it's more valuable uh, as it's just a seamless uh, garment. Um, so that's why they did that. Um, and then, you know, they crucified, divided up his clothes. Um, and then uh, verse 25, it was nine in the morning when they crucified him. The, the written notice of the charge against him read the king of the Jews. Verse 27, they crucified two rebels with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, So, you are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days? Come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him among themselves. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let this Messiah, uh, uh, the ki this King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those crucified with him also heaped insults on him. Verse 33, at noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. Okay, this would be an amazing sight because it doesn't normally get dark at noon. All right, very much daylight um, and until three o'clock in the afternoon. So it wasn't just a little eclipse um, either. It was three hours of darkness. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama shabbathe which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, listen, he's calling Elijah. Some ran and filled a sponge with wine vinegar and put it on a staff and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. With a loud voice, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus saw how he died, he said, surely this man was the son of God. Okay, I bring out uh, uh, that say what he said there. Surely this man was a good son of God. Uh, you just look at two instances, two things that happened here uh, during this crucifixion. Okay, uh, one thing is that it was dark, you know, in, at noon um, till three o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, it doesn't. It's that's not a normal day for it to get dark in the middle of the day and be dark. Uh, till three o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, so something is going on here. All right, this should have got the attention of everyone that was making, uh, that was mocking Jesus. Um, that, but then if, when they go to the temple and see that the curtain was torn in two, that curtain is not something you just rip in two. Okay, it would have taken, uh, I forget how many, uh, you know, teams of oxen it would have taken to to rip that curtain in two. Uh, the curtain was not meant to be ripped at all. And so that uh, was uh, two miracles that happened just with the crucifixion of Jesus. All right, some women were watching from a distance. Among them were Mary, Mary, uh, Mary, Mary Magdalene, 
Mary the mother of James the younger and of Joseph, and Salome. In Galilee, these women had followed him and cared for his needs. And many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem were also there. Verse 42, it was preparation day, that is, the day before the Sabbath. So as evening approached, Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent member of the council who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked uh, if, uh, for Jesus' body. Pilate was surprised to hear that he was already dead. Summoning the centurion, he asked him if Jesus had already died. Okay, Jesus had been uh, beaten on quite a bit before he was actually crucified. Many of the people that are crucified are just crucified. They're not beaten up before they're crucified. But remember, Jesus had been beaten by the, um, the temple guards, and then he'd been beaten by the Roman guards, and, you know, the crown of thorns, and, and uh, the, the whipping that happened, all that stuff was done before the crucifixion, so much so that he could not even walk decently to carry his own cross. And that was kind of a thing you were supposed to do, is carry your own cross. They had to get Simon to do it. So he was had been beaten up and I'm sure lost a lot of blood before the crucifixion. So it's not a surprise that he would have died so quick on the, the cross. Okay. Verse 45, when he had learned from the centurion that it was so, he gave the body to Joseph. So Joseph brought some of the linen cloth, took down the body, wrapped it in linen, and placed it in a tomb cut out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where he was laid. That's an important verse for what we get to the next day, uh, tomorrow. Uh, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where he was laid. Okay, I bring this up every like every time I teach it. If I know I'm going to the cemetery... Um, the next day, uh, or a few days later, uh, to put spices on uh, a body, I'm going to be paying attention to where that body is laid. I'm not going to be, you know, doing a guessing game of like, oh, I wonder where they put Jesus. No, it says Mary, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where he was laid. Okay, so I would be taking note of where he was laid, and so I was sure as to where the tomb was. So when I come back to bury, to you know, put spices on Jesus that I knew where it was, okay? That's an argument that's given that like, oh, they didn't know where the body was and they got in the wrong tomb, okay? I don't think that would have been a possibility because if you are uh, planning on coming back to to, uh, to put the spices on, you would have paid attention to where the body was buried, all right? Uh, so anyway, this is, uh, that talks about the crucifixion. I bring all this up to point out that Jesus did this for you and me. You know, I deserve, I, I'm, I'm a sinner. I deserve to be, um, I deserve eternal hell, really, uh, because of uh, my sin, okay? Um, and it doesn't matter how many sins it, that I have, it matters that I have sinned, okay? And one sin is enough to separate us from God and send us to hell. Um, but Jesus took my place and was, uh, he, he died in my place and um, you're going to see tomorrow he rose again. Um, but he died for me so that I wouldn't have to have um, eternal hell, really. Um, he took my place and did that for me. So that's why I bring all that up. Okay, let me pray. Lord God, I thank you for this time we can be together and that uh, we can remember your, your, uh, the price you gave for us, that it was your life that you gave up for us, uh, that we could have eternity with you. And I, I thank you for uh, doing that for us. And for those that have not received you yet, I pray that they would do that uh, rather quickly. Thank you for your presence in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, join me tomorrow as we continue looking at uh, in the book of Mark and then um, at the resurrection of Jesus. All right. Lord's blessing. I will see you tomorrow.